So um, we have got several items on our agenda for tonight. Um, so particularly we've got four proposals we'll be covering this evening. So this is a first a um, proposal from the Women's Network to on the establishment of a men's welfare network. We then have a proposal from the Accessibility Network proposing amendments to the bylaws regarding accessibility. We then have a proposal from the Sustainability Network and finally a proposal which will be on the renaming of buildings. Buildings. Um, just as a um, reminder to everyone, the cutoff for this meeting will be eight o'clock. So um, I'm afraid just because we've got so many different proposals to get through tonight, um, I'm going to have to be a little bit more strict on timings and that kind of thing. So apologies if I kind of jump in and um, uh, interrupt you at any point. So as a rough speaking time, we'll have about one minute, but I'll remind for the discussion sessions. And just on a note of accessibility as well, um, if um, anyone who doesn't have their camera on, if you can just make sure that you're speaking clearly into your microphone, it's just so that the closed captions can pick up what you're saying as well. And that'd be really helpful. So um, I'll now pass on to Rianne, chair of the Women's Network, to get started. Rianne. Hello. Um, so a while back, we had a proposal about an introduction of a men's network. Sorry, my front door's going classic um, of a men's network. Um, and that went to the Board of Trustees uh, last month. And there was a few issues of that, including risk um, and kind of how that would make the university look and risk management. And we came up with the solution of changing the name a bit. Um, people seem to think that the men's network as a name kind of gave off the wrong ideas of what we were trying to do with it, which is kind of like a support group trying to focus on men's issues like mental health and domestic abuse and men's health and everything like that. Um, so the solution that's being proposed at the moment is that we changed a name from men's network to something along the lines of men's mental health network or maybe something else uh, agenda issues network and combine the women's and the men's or um, a, a diversity officer or so, something along the lines of that to try and mitigate some of the risk um, so that's where we are we are at now um, I was talking to the board of trustees and they kind of approved the name change and stuff um, so now it's over to this channel of people to have a discussion around it and see what would be the best option Brilliant. Thanks, Rianne. Um, and just in case anyone hasn't been able to see a copy of the proposal, um, it is on the Kent Union website. And I'm sure someone will be able to just pop that into the chat quickly. Um, so before we move on to general group discussion, I'll just ask if there's anyone who wishes to oppose the motion at all. If you could just raise your hand now. Uh, thank you, Sebastian. Um, I'll give you an opportunity to um, make some remarks in a moment. So as normal, we'll go for an initial speech from Rianne as proposing the motion, then we'll move to Sebastian for the opposition, and then we'll open the floor for a general discussion before moving to a vote. So on one minute speaking time, over to you, Rianne. Yeah, so there's really not much to add from what I was just saying. Um, the Women's Network kind of feel very strongly about having some sort of male mental health representation at the university. There's a few groups, um, but having something centralised would be amazing and something centralised where we can branch out into other topics like just having a safe space for men, something to talk about, you know, issues I've already mentioned, domestic abuse, men's health, um, just having that support group. Um, we understand that the men's network can often come across as something that we don't want it to. So we're completely happy to have this conversation about name change. We're completely open to ideas, uh, but we do stand our ground on having something implemented in the first place. Doesn't matter what the name is, we're, we're happy to have a discussion on that. Brilliant, thank you, Rianne. And Sebastian. Yes, yeah, so um, I just want to kind of act as the opposer, um, kind of, my view from when I originally opposed it back in December uh, hasn't really changed. I did read over um, the revised proposal, and I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. However, 
as I mentioned back in December, we already have a network that deals with mental health, which is the Accessibility Network. Since um, December, when I also put out that, you know, we were very happy for anyone to come forward and campaign for men's mental health specifically in the network, not a single person from any part of the school, from the UEC, no one has reached out to do absolutely anything about mental health for men. I don't see the need for it, not in general, but in the particular network system, I don't see anybody asking for it. Um, while I absolutely agree that men's mental health in general should definitely be spoken about more, um, I just don't see the specific niche for it here. Um, there's no other network that only acts as a support group or a campaign for one topic. I mean, I think especially renaming it to men's welfare even limits the scope further um, to almost a ridiculous point because, again, there's there's no network, no other network that campaigns for one thing that acts as a campaign or a support group for one thing. Um, and just to kind of close off my my um, opening remark, I have taken the time um, since December to speak to many, many other students that don't typically come to UEC meetings to get their feedback. And I have struggled to find a single person um, re even remotely in support of introducing this network, as well as taking a look at other universities. I struggled to find any other university that did something similar that has gone overwhelmingly well. Um, so yeah, that's that's my opening speech. Thank you very much. Brilliant, thank you, Sebastian. And uh, apologies, um, my internet's going a little bit um, nuts at the moment. So um, apologies if I cut off at all. So I'll oh, I'm now- I'm sorry, one more thing. I don't mean to cut you off, Connor. I just wanted to say Paul George from the Accessibility Network also wished to act as a second opposer, but he can't raise his hand. Um, but he wanted to, he, he texted, he wanted to act as an official opposer. Brilliant. Thank you so much, from Sebastian. If there's any other points he wants to make during the discussion, um, just, just pop your hand up and let me know. Brilliant. So um, we'll now move on to a 20 minute um, discussion on this. Um, so the cutoff will be at 10 past seven. So with one minute speaking time, um, I'll now open up the floor to other members, starting with Nelly. Uh, one thing just quickly before we actually start, um, I will, if that's OK with everyone again, I will be raising my hand for Paul to vote just so that we actually have, since Sebastian's uh, part of other networks as well, I'll be acting as the, the hand for Paul. Um, my other point was that I appreciate the amount of work that's been done on this. Um, I can see that a lot has been done in terms of researching and in terms of trying to advance this. It doesn't, however, address some of the issues that were raised previously by UEC members around um, voting in UEC if it becomes a network. I know there was a lot of um, kind of intent around um, from the group before about it being more of a student group rather than a network so that um, underrepresented voices could still make sure that their voices were heard effectively through UEC. Um, I just wanted to raise that as a point that maybe <laughs> this, those same people may not be here in this meeting, but it's something that hasn't been addressed through the current changes as far as I'm aware. Thank you, Nelly. Um, Aisha. Thank you. Um, this isn't it, particularly in response to Nelly's question. However, I just kind of wanted to. I, I don't want a repeat of last time's um, UEC. So I think the the questions that are being raised around um, how the network would work um, around things like campaigning for specific things. I kind of just wanted to remind members that networks provide a central system for people to come forward um, about their issues and complaints, for them to be consulted on particular issues and for them to vote and put forward proposals for the strategic and um, directional movement of Kent Union. And so I just wanted to encourage students that um, to know that this kind of network would be likely consulting with societies on the matter, such as Respect the No for domestic violence and sexual harassment um, for other mental health societies. But it uh, makes my understanding that the Women's Network would like for a central 
network to be able to facilitate those conversations. And so I ultimately just wanted to encourage members to try and find ways where they can get over that barrier and find something that they would be comfortable having. Um, as it is my understanding that the Women's Network would feel very strongly about that. Um, so thank you very much. I didn't make much of a point. I just want us to try and have a conversation that facilitates something instead of pushing away an idea. Brilliant. Thank you, Aisha. Um, Nelly, did you want to speak again? Sorry, my hands oh. up for Paul. Yeah, sorry, Nelly's just <laughs> raised out her hand for me. So, um, yeah, what I just wanted to add to what has been said, because I think after, um, you know, time to process everything, I believe in regards to just um, looking at what's sort of best for the union and what's best for the students, I believe we should definitely have more conversations about uh, mental health awareness. Uh, but I do think that uh, and I'm sort of agreeing with Sebastian on that in terms of just general mental health awareness and taking over, um, you know, different um, sort of supporting groups and connecting with that would be more of an aspect that the accessibility network takes over and that we also want to do. We want to push for greater mental health awareness. And I don't think that it sort of justifies to make a specific network only for one specific group and their mental health um concerns because i do think that you know so everyone's mental health needs to be addressed uh you know men's women's uh trans non-binary etc uh so i think we should rather be thinking about uh creating a general mental health officer that could work alongside or together with the accessibility network on uh, those kinds of issues which i think would would allow us to um you know benefit everyone in the long run uh, and help everyone during, you know, especially during COVID and everyone sort of needing more mental health awareness and support. I think that would be a better solution to that, which is why uh, I um, am, yeah, in the opposition today, because I just think, um, you know, you don't need a specific network for that. Um, okay, thank you, Paul George. Um, Rianne. Yeah, I mean, this conversation is so interesting because although the Women's Network did proposed this that it was to be a men's network we i mean having this conversation over the last couple of months has really made us consider a lot of things that we hadn't before especially surrounding the risk and kind of the um the look of how this would be um so when we are talking about making it a network or not or making it something different we're not clinging on to the idea of a network if we can come to a conclusion that's a lot better in that oh we'll make this group or we'll do something along these lines it doesn't particularly have to be a network that's what we started at because i think we were a bit naive going into it but having these meetings and listening to all these other opinions has given us kind of another light on it so we're, we're not desperately clinging on to the network idea we're just really passionate about gender equality and having something for men for them to know that the university supports them in a way that, like I should said, is centralised and can be monitored and can be accessed, you know, in, in one central place. That's the thing that we're really trying to achieve. So if we can't come to a decision on a network or the vast majority of people do oppose a network for the reasons that have been said, then that's fine. We just want to try and reach a conclusion that benefits men and their mental health and their physical health and their safety in a way that's centralised, accessible and just kind of all round. I don't know, it's, it's a group. It doesn't have to be a network. That's that's all I'm saying. So if we can't come to a conclusion, then we're absolutely fine to talk about other options. Brilliant. Thank you, Rianne. Uh, Sebastian. I mean, yeah, I just wanted to say, um, first of all, that I think um, this new proposal is definitely a huge step in the right direction. And I think it's obvious, I think as others have said, it's obvious how much time and effort has gone into considering this and and really um, trying to be very fair. And I, I think I think it's it's really great that actually the women's not proposed this because I, I think it shows a, a very specific level of care and thought has gone into this. Um, and so I do want to acknowledge that. One thing we've been, ever since the conversations in December, we've been discussing in the Accessibility Network is mental health in general. Um, 
and and how really oftentimes it, it can get shoved to the side. Um, even in the accessibility network, um, you might not think immediately, oh, mental health falls under this. Um, and so we've been having a lot of conversations about that. And I, I think really this would be really well suited to a student group. Um, I think student groups in general are a lot more accessible than networks. I mean, I don't know about every single network, but I know that in the networks I'm in, we don't get a ton of students coming with concerns. We don't get a ton of students. We get one or two or five, but we're not getting an influx of students. A lot of students don't even know about them yet. Maybe in a few years time, hopefully it'll be um, a bit more transparent. But I mean, we, we they don't tend to act as overwhelmingly social spaces. They definitely have social aspects, network nights. Um, sometimes we'll get a whopping four people and it'll be fantastic and we'll chat for two hours. Um, but they're not heavily social spaces. So that puts me off already a little bit to the idea of a men's network, um, because, you know, especially um, a men's welfare network, especially where the only purpose that really I'm seeing is to address mental health. Um, again, um, you know, it's it's a bit odd to me that a network would only address one thing, but also because these networks, as they currently function, just don't have that much conversation between students. I can't see how a network would be overwhelmingly helpful to actually combat the problem. However, a student group tends to get a lot more engagement. I bet you'd have a lot more. Just to cut you off there. It's... Oh, so sorry. I'm sorry, just in terms of speaking time. Um, oh, we... yeah, sorry. Yeah, but oh, um, because we've got a yeah, lot to student group. group. I'm sorry My about apologies. That. Yeah, I think a student group would be a, a really good um, platform for this. But yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Sebastian. Apologies for that. Um, Nelly. Yeah, just really to completely agree with what Sebastian said. I think that this is much more suited to being a student group. When you look at the identity networks at the moment, they're for minority groups or typically underrepresented groups. So I think bringing a male group into that isn't necessarily the most <laughs> conductive to like making sure that um, minority voices are being heard. So I think definitely a student group would be a better idea. Um, it also gives you a little bit more freedom to kind of work with charities and kind of some of the other things. Um, and I mean, from the clubs and societies I'm in, they do a lot of a lot of work to raise money for charities and to kind of partner up with each other in a way that the networks, although they try to as much as they can, don't really have the same kind of freedoms as such. Um, so I think, yeah, that was kind of my point was I think I agree a student group would probably be a better outcome for this. Thank you, Nelly. Uh, Rianne? Yeah, the student group is something that we're totally happy to do. Um, it still helps with this centralised. The issue is the centralisation. We have a lot of groups on campus, like charities, like Movember, and a lot of the sports groups are, get, are getting behind, kind of like the mine charities and stuff, um, but they're fleeting. It kind of comes in waves rather than a continuational thing something that's always there. Um, so having a student group would be really good. I mean, the Women's Network are perfectly happy to work alongside accessibility and uh, Aisha as welfare, just to make sure we're covering everything because we don't claim to be, we're not men, <laughs> first of all, we don't claim to be experts on mental health either. So uh, that's something we can work with. Uh, as long as it's something that's centralized, accessible, then I think that's a good um, middle point. We're, we're happy with that. Thank you, Vian. Uh, Aisha. Thank you. Um, sort of in the meantime, um, as this is obviously an ongoing issue, and we can't pretend to um, underestimate the issues that um, have been exacerbated due to the COVID-19 lockdown, um, we just wanted to say that the officer team has been working on um, these kind of issues, um, such as improving the accessibility of mental health and wellbeing events and programmes and schemes. Um, we work with um, local businesses and organisations in the community on suicide safer programmes, um, particularly where the rates of suicide are high for in general, but a lot higher for men than they are for women and non-binary people. And so this is very much an issue that is ongoing. And so um, our officer team is, is quite balanced gender wise. Um, I understand if people might not want to come to me personally um, in my role. However, people are welcome to get in touch with us um, and kind of speak about their issues and where we can help resolve them. 
Thank you, Aisha. Uh, Elizabeth. Um, I just want to say as a student that isn't part of any like network groups, um, that having having it called men's mental health, sorry, men's welfare network, I think takes away from the fact that it would be focused on mental health. And it sort of um, adds this sort of uh, unspoken idea that it's almost an opposition to a woman's network. And I'd hope that like, the fact that the board shot it down when it probably had a less like male centered name is an issue that we really need to talk about. And the fact that we don't want it to be called like a mental health society or, or something along those lines sort of shows that Kent needs to get better at mental health. And I hope that we fix that coming in the coming years. Thank you, Elizabeth. Nelly. Uh, it's for Paul. Um, yeah, I would just uh, also say that also in response to the Women's Network and what Sebastian, Nelly and Asia were sort of pointing out, I think, um, yes, definitely we should, um, you know, increase talk more about um, mental health awareness also in the accessibility network, just because, you know, we've been even thinking about sort of uh, creating greater awareness in that regard by changing our own name just to um, show people that we're also standing up for mental health awareness in that regard. Um, so I do also think that a student group would be um, yeah, a better place to sort of address these issues and that we in general should be focusing uh, way more on in just everyone's mental health and pushing for um, that together with, you know, cross network, cross societies. And um, yeah, and I also agree with Nelly in the point that, you know, mainly the networks, I mean, except for, you know, Team Kent, et cetera, are for, um, you know, minority voices. And um, yeah, so I think, that sort of um, lean, makes me lean more to the direction of um, rather having like a student group to address these issues rather than uh, a network. But yeah, that's all that I wanted to say. Brilliant, thank you, Paul George. Um, so obviously the theme of having the network as a student group um, rather than a separate network in its own right seems to have popped up. Um, is there any further comments anyone kind of wants to make on that as potentially an alternative to passing the resolution today? Vicky. Uh, actually, it's not necessarily an alternative, but it's more of a way forward. Um, and just a suggestion, obviously, Rianne, you can say now if you want to. Um, but it might be worth reaching out to um, like the welfare officers of wellbeing um, Oh, I don't know what their title is, Adam might correct me, um, but the welfare officers on like sports teams and within societies um, to sort of get to grips with what their sort of support level is and how they're helping to support their students. I know that they're often the first portal call for Copperfield and um, other community action groups when they're um, dealing with sports clubs and societies. So sort of before we can officially set up a um, student group it might be worth sort of talking to them to see sort of what support they might need and then going from there if the society is something that they really feel like they would benefit from or if it's more of like a facilitating them getting together and then we can sort of go from there um because I don't know Tom might have to correct us on process and things like that I don't know how quickly we can get a student group set up um but that's more sort of the in the meantime going forward kind of route yeah, absolutely. Um, I know most societies have had to introduce EDI officers or welfare officers, and in some situations they may have two. So definitely a first point of call. Thank you, Vicky. Brilliant. Um, what I might just do is bring in Tom just for a point of information, um, just to clarify um, what the best course of action might be in terms of whether we go for a student group or whether we can pass the motion or not. Uh, Tom? Um, sure. Um, so in terms of obviously the bylaws and the proposal at the moment, it's obviously a bylaw amendment that's been um, put forward. Um, therefore, to an extent, the two options are, and part of this is up to what Rianne, uh, Rianne wants to do, is either put it to a vote still um, as it stands as a bylaw an amendment for a network and vote on that. And if people don't feel that's the appropriate um, mechanism, then vote it down. Um, or just remove it um, from this forum as a uh, um, as a vote and Rian can withdraw it and in the meantime work on the um, student group approach. There's nothing that requires any votes for it to be a student group. Um, that's outside the scope of the bylaws and um, UEC. 
Um, so if it was to be a student group that can just go through our normal processes, there's no further votes required. So it is, it's to an extent up to Rian what um, you would like to do, but those are the kind of the two immediate options. Brilliant, thank you, Tom. Uh, Rian. I think I'll just go with um, option two, because I mean, I, I don't think many people are in support of the network idea and we've kind of come to a resolution that seems plausible and logical. Um, so I'll just pull that. I don't know how I'll do that, but I'm sure Tom will tell me. And then in the meantime, I'll take Vicky's advice and I'll reach out to some already standing people who know what they're doing and I'll get a report together or some information and we can go from there. Great, thank you, Rian. Um, Sebastian, I see you've got your hand up. Yeah, I actually just wanted to give another quick suggestion. It just made me think when we were talking about the student group stuff. Um, one thing you might look into is maybe some sort of like, kind of support group. Um, I know that um, uh, there's one currently um, for uh, black women. Sorry, uh, there's one currently for black women that was started during uh, Black History Month, which I heard is going really well. Uh, and there's another one we're trying to get started for um, the LGBT community as well. Um, and I think something student support and well-being could look into running, um, not as opposed to a student group, like in addition to. Uh, I heard it's gotten really good engagement and people have um, felt like they're they're really being heard. So maybe as another thing you could look into as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Sebastian. And I'm sure that can be considered as well alongside an official student group. Brilliant. So um, I think for the purposes of um, just um, the agenda, um, we'll consider the proposal withdrawn. Oops, sorry about that. That's my own timer. Um, and um, we, if anyone's got any further comments on that, um, just raise your hand. But otherwise, we'll move on to um, the accessibility network proposal. Um, so I'll hand over to whoever's presenting that from the accessibility network. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to take over. Um, but you know, uh, Sebastian Nelly, um, whoever also like, feel free to pop in after me. Um, yeah, but effectively, what we are, were trying to um, do with this proposal is just to um, encourage or you know, sort of manifest into the bylaw that uh, the UEC meetings as well as um, the UEC elections need to be more accessible to disabled students just because um, there are just some issues um, you know that that we want to be addressed for example like even even the minor things I don't know if you guys realize that throughout but for example that Nelly raises um, her hand for me or um, also just you know that the chat needs to be read out aloud etc so yeah we were just thinking about um, making it a policy in terms of just having captions provided transcript provided it having um, also the chance for people to join remotely even after you know the whole pandemic thing is over etc so that um, no one is excluded from the UC meetings or the general um, elections in the end and we encourage um, want to encourage also Kent Union to sort of collaborate together with the relevant disabled student group on um, considering um, you know new aspects that can be implemented in order for more people to sort of participate and join and to being able to um, make their voices heard, uh, especially since you know a lot of things are still very inaccessible to disabled students, a lot of university um, you know, related matters. And we feel like it's a good first step to um, have the student union to be very accessible so that this creates a bigger platform for more disabled students to join in campaign for disability and accessibility related issues. So that in the long run, we hopefully also can inform just general university policy. I mean, uh, I you know the the proposal was I think sent around earlier, so I'm sure everyone sort of read it through, and we would um, really love to have um, you know everyone's support with uh, this notion. Great, thank you, Paul George. Um, and that is also available on the website if anyone wants to um, quickly read that who hasn't seen it. Um, before um, I just invite the co-submitters to um, say anything in support of the proposal, um, is there anyone who's wishing to make a statement opposing the proposal? Uh, 
I'll take that as a no. So um, is there any of the co-submitters who wish to say anything in support of the proposal? Uh, Sebastian. Just a quick one for me this time, promise. Um, but I mean, not much to say that Paul already hasn't said, but just that, um, you know, it's, sorry, um, it's, it's a really great proposal. Um, kind of step forward in accessibility issues and addressing accessibility issues at the university. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> just kind of reiterating what Paul said, to be honest. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Sebastian. Um, is there any of the other co-submitters who wants to say anything before we just open to broader discussion? If not, um, we'll go for 10 minutes speaking, sorry, not 10 minutes speaking time, it's a lot, um, 10 minutes open discussion and anyone who wishes to make any comments, um, just raise your hands. Aisha. Um, I guess I kind of just wanted to respond to what Elizabeth said in the chat, um, which reads transcripts for recorded lectures would be very helpful, like what is given to people with dyslexia on their ILP and standard captions of all lecturers would be would also be nice. Um, so this we've been working um, to kind of make sure that um, ILPs are adhered to um, as well. Has anyone else lost her? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Are you still there, Aisha? Uh, I can kind of hear uh, you. OK, <laughs> just give her a couple of seconds. I really hope she knows she's frozen and hasn't just said it all and has to re-say it. Oh, she's back. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yep. <laughs> OK, cool. <laughs> um, so essentially what I wanted to say is um, regarding Elizabeth's message in the um, in the chat, which reads transcripts for recorded lectures to be very helpful, like what is given to people with dyslexia on their um, inclusive learning plans and standard captions of lecturers would also be nice. Um, we, um, as Nelly has already said, um, the Accessibility Network is working on this right now to ensure that ILPs are adhered to and when they're implemented, they're implemented in a way that truly does benefit the individual student. And so um, we're continuing to work on improving the accessibility at the University of Campus um, and also online learning at the, at the current moment. Um, but what this proposal is um, pertaining to in particular is to ensure that our union executive committee meetings are as accommodating as possible to disabled students and um, additional needs, as well as um, other Kent Union activities that we may hold, such as our leadership elections. And um, so um, I would I would hope that in addition to um, the work we're currently doing with the university, that we can endeavour to make Kent Union more accessible as well and um, to encourage the engagement of students and to make sure that disabled people can um, access and engage in all of our stuff as much as possible. Brilliant, thank you, Aisha. Uh, Nelly, did I see your hand? Uh, yeah, just quickly wanted to kind of add to that a little bit. Um, in if you are having issues, please come forward to the Accessibility Network. We're really working on this hard, so it'd be great to have more contribution from more students. Um, what this is addressing is, uh, obviously, I unsuccessfully ran in the leadership elections, and through that whole process, we discovered there were quite a number of things that maybe weren't as accessible as they could be for someone who has auditory processing issues like myself. Um, so Tom worked very hard with me to help um, kind of find solutions to some of those issues and was great the whole way through. Um, but basically, what this policy is focusing on is about um, 
helping Kent Union to kind of work with the Accessibility Network to make everything as accessible as it can possibly be for everyone. So like you've probably seen in this meeting already, I have to raise my hand for Paul because there is no accessible um, function to raise the hand if you're unable to do so by seeing the screen and clicking on it. Um, so that's not really very accessibility friendly. Um, there's also kind of general things around making sure that if papers are being handed out, they are screen reader friendly. There's there's kind of a whole range of things. And this policy is basically just um, making sure that Kent Union as part of its general process has to include these accessibility concerns in everything that they do so that going forward we have a much more accessible space for everyone. Um, so yes we are working on other things outside of this but this is about making sure that Kent Union is, 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 is sorry I can't speak today is as accessible as it possibly can be and that moving forward we can then begin to put more pressure on the university to increase their accessibility because if Kent Union is setting the example of we can do this all well then the university really doesn't have an excuse not to. So it's it's the first step in kind of really trying to improve things generally in access. Thanks so much for that, Nelly. Um, as um, we don't have any opponents to the motion, I'd move that we dis that we move straight to a vote unless there's any opponents to that. OK, so what we'll do now is we'll move to our normal vote. So um, in a moment, I'll call upon um, people to either vote yes or no or abstain from passing the amendment to the bylaws. So um, first off, could I just ask anyone who's voting for the motion to please raise your hands now? Hiya. Um, for some reason, it's not letting me raise my hand. So I just wanted to say it um, out loud that I'm raising my hand for the motion, just so you can count it. Brilliant. Thank you, Abby. Notes it. And we'll just give. I'll just give Tom a second just to confirm those. Okay, I believe that is unanimous, but just um, just to double check if everyone could lower their hands and we'll just record anyone voting against the motion. So if the yeses could just lower their hands and if you're voting no, just keep them up. Thank you. I see one no. Um, can I just clarify, sorry, um, Connor, just about Raya for Sustainability Network. Um, your hand was up both occasions, so I just want to double check. How are you voting, Raya? Um, I'm voting in favour, sorry, that was an accident. Brilliant, thanks. And any abstentions? I don't see any abstentions. So, um, Tom, where are we at quora? Um, quorum was minimum quorum was met of thirteen voters, all thirteen in favour of the proposal. Therefore, it meets two thirds quorum at uh, two thirds threshold, and therefore passes. Brilliant, thank you, Tom. Fantastic. So, we'll now move straight on to the proposal from the Sustainability Network. Hi, everyone. And so, I believe that was where we yeah. go for it. Uh, hi, yeah. So uh, just going on from the previous proposal that we had, we've sort of made some amendments to that. Um, so this is, of course, regarding turning into net zero university by the year 2030. Um, so, of course, 
um, as we have discussed this before and we know that it hasn't really passed, um, we have made a few amendments. Um, so in terms of what we urge Kent Union to do is review how Kent Union structurally deals with sustainability. Um, and of course, initially the plan was that we were going to have a full time officer for sustainability. But now we've amended that by assigning a responsibility um, of sort of adding sustainability onto the uh, responsibilities of the VP welfare and community officer. Um, and apart from this, we also discussed a possibility of creating a student internship, um, which of course something is something that could be um, decided as if this policy does pass. Um, so in this case, that would be more temporary and this would be some a student um, who would work primarily just on sustainability along with the VP welfare and community officer. Um, and this would enable the federation and visibility of green groups, um, as well as individuals across, across university staff and spread awareness of sustainability. Um, and of course, they would also monitor sustainability um, on Kent Union and um, around campus. Um, and of course, um, to support the sustainability network, they would provide sort of like a backup um, and expertise to ensure the continuity of their work each year. Um, so they would really work sort of hand in hand with the network as well as the VP welfare. Um, apart from this, we also um, sort of want to ensure that the consideration of sustainability is in all of Kent Union's policy areas. Um, and it's also lobbied into um, sort of the curriculum. So there's always an environmental consideration in all of the um, subjects that are being taught. Um, so this would be by in including carbon literacy into curriculum areas across all divisions. Um, another thing that we discussed last time was accessibility. So this is something that we've amended. Um, we obviously want to ensure that accessibility and um, disability staff networks are considered. Um, so this would be by consulting and accommodating disabled staff and students um, through existing governance structures. Um, but of course, um, th and this would include both accessibility and disability. Um, and we also want to lobby the university to aim to be carbon neutral by 2030, as this is in the Paris Agreement. And we believe that if the university decides to do this as well, then of course, that would be a really big step um, as an entire sort of a big group of people would be involved. Um, and we want to ensure that all students are able to access and engage in all sustainable policies. Um, so we just want to have as much engagement as possible. And we feel that if this is sort of passed on as a policy, then it would give people an incentive um, to make a difference at a much sooner time. So, yeah. So what we have sort of fixed in our policy this time is adding on the accessibility factor, the disability, as well as um, changing our full time officer into a part time thing, be it through either an internship or um, a lot um, sort of with the VP welfare and communi um, community officer. So, yeah, that's what we have. Connor, you're on mute. Thanks. Um, thanks, Ria. Um, before um, we move on to any of the seconders who wish to say anything else in support, I'll just ask if there's anyone who wishes to act as an opponent for the proposal. OK, I don't see any opponents, so um, is there any additional proposal speeches anyone wishes to make? Aisha. Thank you. I, I guess I kind of wanted to explain the rationale between um, some of the decisions that were made following from the last discussion at UEC. Um, and the discussions that we've had with the sustainability network, um, our understanding is that although sustainability was and it continues to be discussed by officers, um, it previously was not in the job description or role description of either of the officers and instead was kind of tagged along with the wishes of a particular individual in the role to continue the work. And so previously that is not tagged onto a particular role. It has kind of sat with um, the president and it's sat with the vice president welfare and community and it's sat with particular ones. And so we kind of just wanted to put it in um, to make sure that it's very explicitly tied to a particular officer who year on year can include that kind of work in their handover and where there's kind of like clear um, direction in in the role. Um, but also just making sure that there's clear consultation with disabled staff and students to make sure that in particular cases uh, sustainability isn't kind of removing accessibility and that instead they can work in tandem. So I would encourage students to support this um, and and 
have this in our bylaws to make sure that officers in years to come are encouraging the university to work on sustainability and include students in that in that progress that they're making. Great. Uh, brilliant. Thank you, Aisha. Um, I'll now move to open dis discussion for 10 minutes. Um, if there's anyone who wishes to make any points, please raise your hand now. Rian. Yeah, just really quickly, I kind of just wanted to echo what's already been said. I think there's no greater issue than sustainability. It's something that affects all of us, no matter who we are or where we are. Um, and I know that Ria has been working really hard alongside the Accessibility Network to make this proposal um, something that benefits everyone. So, yeah, just to quickly echo my support for it and uh, encourage everyone to support it as well. Thank you. Um, any other comments before we move to vote? Uh, Romain. Hi, um, I just uh, would like to remind that um, the UK government has set a plan uh, to turn completely emission free by 2050 and is willing like and by the end of the decade uh, to lower uh, their emissions by 16%. Uh, so basically just by approving this policy, you would like it just is a part of contributing to the action plan of the government because um, it, it it has to be tackled before from university uh, is the best place to start from uh, and by attributing to, uh, sorry uh, by approving this policy you are contributing and ensuring that in the future when Ken Union has kind of um, a background or something um, strong to negotiate with the university to make sure that they imply um, this um, well their their goals because the university has said that too um yeah so yeah vote for brilliant thank you remain any other hands okay i i don't see any hands um if anyone wants to make any additional comments um just um shout out now um, but if not, we'll move straight to a vote. So um, if I could ask anyone who wishes to vote to pass the proposal, please raise your hands now. Brilliant, thank you. If you could load those now. And anyone voting no? Uh, uh, Sebastian, just to clarify, are you voting to oppose the motion? No, I'm sorry. I was just struggling with the raise hand feature. Don't mind me. <laughs> no, that's right. What happens to us? Um, and any abstentions? OK, I don't see any abstentions. So. Tom, I believe we pass. Uh, yeah, minimum quorum was met and two thirds majority um, unanimous in favour. Therefore, the motion passes. Brilliant. Awesome. Thank you, Tom. Um, so lastly, we'll move on to our last proposal, um, which is from the BAME and International Networks. And can I invite the proposer to please um, propose a motion? Hi, 
Um, so essentially what we're trying to propose is that um, we create a type of process that really sets um, a precedent to encourage future reviews of um, names and systems at the University of Kent that are not representative of the type of institution that um, it is. Um, we propose that the new names that upon review and that would then be changed, um, help provide an inclusive environment for students and future applicants to feel safe and welcomed at the university. Um, we would like to firstly lobby um, the University of Kent through Kent, through Kent Union to rename the buildings um, such as like eateries on campus um, or colleges on campus that do not reflect the culture and diversity of the current and future student body um, at the University of Kent. Um, along with this, of the first um, name we propose is the Keynes College, who was, for example, named after John Maynard Keynes. Um, he was outspoken in his support of eugenics for those of Black, Asian, and minority ethnic descent and disabled people. He was also anti-Semitic, a nationalist, and um, have been seen to hold sympathies towards racism and Nazism. So this is just an example of the type of name um, well, college name review that we would like to um, lobby the University of Kent to really implement at this time, essentially. Um, you're muted. Cheers. Um, brilliant. Thanks, Charlene. Um, is before um, we have any more second uh, speeches, is there anyone who wishes to oppose the proposal at all? No, if not, um, we'll move to um, any further seconders who wish to make any speeches. Uh, Sebastian. So, um, yeah, so this is something that uh, we've been working on uh, for quite a bit now um, with Josh when he was here and, and with our networks by ourselves. Um, and really, we'd like to pass this so we can bring sort of more of, of student power um, towards the building names, but also to set kind of a precedent in general. So. The reason we came up with this is because in reviewing um, the, the the current names of buildings, a number of them came up um, to have very uh, difficult <laughs> connotations. Um, so there was um, certain people who who were very adamant supporters of eugenics, for example, or um, child labor or slavery. Um, so really just not very kind people. Um, and, and so we would like, you know, this obviously doesn't give us the broad power to just change the names ourselves as much as that would be great, um, but rather um, just to urge the union to lobby the university to change, but also um, just to kind of set a general precedent for, you know, if, if we've got these landmarks, or I guess um, landmarks may not be the right word, but these symbols in our university that are um, kind of upholding I say very unfortunate things, for example, eugenics, that we as students um, don't just kind of stand by and and let that continue to be represented. Um, so yeah, that's that's that was our thought process when creating this. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Sebastian. Um, I'll now open up the floor to any other points. Um, Please raise your hands now. Oh, could I could I say something? I'm sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. sure, go for it. Oh. Okay. Um, no, just quickly, also, just uh, as as like a, a cosign of this um, policy proposal. 
I also think it's just, you know, it's all around just um, representation and making more students feel more comfortable, as well as, um, you know, what Sebastian um, and Charlton pointed out, just, just set uh, a precedent in that regard. But I do also, I just want to say that we, um, you know, we've been very, um, you know, we consider a lot also the process that we want to go through. So we're trying to um, want to make it very transparent and inclusive of uh, inclusive of everyone because we're not, um, you know, obviously as just a few people in the network not representing the entire student community. So we really put a lot of thought into that, how to make it uh, an accessible and transparent and inclusive process also throughout the way so that we have as much feedback um, from other students that want to collaborate or um, sort of join in as we can uh, in order to have, um, you know, the biggest um, support in, you know, the University of Kent student community in the end um, when it comes to, for example, voting on the names and putting it forward to the UC. So um, I just want to emphasize that, that it's really about, you know, sort of including everyone within the process and we thought uh, talked about it and um, to sort of push for these name changes as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Paul George. Um, Ahmed. Um, I think my point was just a just a general support um, in the name changes <coughs> different buildings in, in um, at our university. I think it's needed. I think it's very important that it is uh, that we have a, we have this open conversation around you know how our university is making sure it's representative of the diverse cohort that we have, and this is a conversation that I think needs to happen. So I 100% welcome it as a student. I think my real question here is, you know, how can we, as you know, the support this to push off of appetite of students out there that want to participate in this conversation. So I think, um, you know, how can we give this opportunity to a variety of students or open it up, this discussion open up to the to the wider cohort of students at our university? But I will welcome it, and I thank those proposers that thank, uh, proposed it, and I think it's a good challenge to our university. And I think it's conversation. Brilliant. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, Sebastian? Yeah, so I just wanted to answer that because that's actually something we thought about a lot and we talked about a lot. Um, and also in consulting with Tom, um, there was a specific way we had to propose this. So it actually was a was a, an actual proposal and not just <laughs> um, us figuring out how to do it. But if you take a look at the proposal um, in the appendix, we outlined what we thought would be a fair process. Um, which is essentially that the voting on the new name goes to the entire student body as well as the um, the submissions for new names. So, you know, you every student gets to suggest um, possible names. Um, so that's why we kind of again, that's not um, that's not set in stone policy. Um, it's just the appendix, but we outline what we thought would be a fair kind of process that way students were 100% involved not just networks because I think when we were originally talking about it a lot of it came down to okay this is what we think we think but you know we're five ten network members um that's not representative of the entire student body so yeah if you take a look at the appendix that's kind of what we came up with as well as in the actual proposal itself we came up with sort of like a quota of like a new um I'm trying to figure out words. They've they've all left me right now. But if you take a look at the actual proposal, um, the quota part two, um, we outlined also something else that we we thought would be fair. So yeah. <laughs> um, sorry about my wordiness, but yeah, I hope that answered the question. Thank you, Sebastian. Brilliant. Thank you both. Um, so I'll just double check if there's n oh uh, Nelly, go for it. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to add to that um, in that uh, we have been working on this really closely and it is something that we really wanted to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to actually have their say in. Um, a lot of the issues around representation around um, these kind of issues come from the university and the processes not involving students. So that's something we really wanted to make sure did actually happen. Um, and you know we we debated a lot about how you go around choosing names and to what degree people can be considered good or bad it's 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 a really difficult 
um, thing to discuss when we're discussing historical figures. So um, yeah, please have a look at the kind of suggested process that we uh, have put in there. Obviously that's not finalised. The main thing is just we need to get this underway to actually make sure that the name changes happen. Um, the kind of details can be figured out later down the line with the health of officers and with the um, with the Kent Union team. Um, but we really just want to get this underway so we can actually start making the changes because the longer we leave it <laughs> discussing the kind of ins and outs of exactly how we're going to go around this process the longer it, it doesn't change um, and it is directly affecting students and it's directly affecting potential students too so we need to just get things underway a bit um, and work with our fabulous officer team on it. <laughs> Thank you Nelly. Uh, Aisha. Thank you. Um, I am sure the concerns around um, the exact procedure are not are hopefully not enough for someone to vote against this. Um, however, I just kind of wanted to reassure people. Um, I had the pleasure of speaking to the president of Liverpool Guild of Students, who um, was able to lead a campaign to change um, one of the names of their buildings as well. Um, and what they were able to do is get in touch with student groups and societies that may have had particular interest and ask for nominations. And then that they were put to a student vote. Um, so there are various ways in which we could try to get students involved. Um, and so uh, this is also important to remind people that this is something that Joshua Frost was working on before he left us a couple of weeks ago. And so this has been something on the agenda for university staff as well. And it appears that they are also um, willing to collaborate on this. So um, I am if everyone is comfortable with the way that it has been outlined, the process in the proposal, um, I can reassure students that it will go ahead. Brilliant, thank you, Aisha. Um, is there any final points um, anyone wishes to discuss on the proposal at all? If not, we'll move straight to vote. So I don't see any hands. So to start off with, um, in order to pass the proposal, if anyone could raise their hands who wishes to vote for the proposal to pass. So any yeses, please. I think words are escaping me this evening as well, actually. Well, as long as I'm not alone. <laughs> You're honestly not alone, Sebastian, in that. <laughs> not at all. Brilliant. Thank you, everyone. So one second, um, if that's OK. If you just took your hand down, I didn't see who it was, but do you mind just putting it back up? Yeah, just because this one's not unanimous, I don't think, which is why I'm now having to double check who's actually voted. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Connor. Brilliant. Thanks, Tom. Um, cool. So could yeses please pop down their hands and any noes? OK, I don't see any noes. Any abstentions?
Okay, thank you. And Tom? Um, Corsi was met 11 votes in favour, two votes abstaining, and therefore the motion has hit two thirds majority and has passed. Brilliant. Thank you, Tom. Cool. So um, that brings us to the end of our proposals. So as we've still got 10 minutes left, um, I'll now open up the floor for um, any updates from officers or elected members or any other business at all. So um, please feel free just to raise your hands. Uh, Vicky. Uh, yeah, I know that normally at UEC the officers go through sort of everything we've done in the last sort of like month or so. Um, but we obviously, alongside AGM, released our accountability report, uh, which has got sort of an up to date what we've been up to. Um, so we're probably not going to go through it right now. Uh, but if any of you have any questions, feel free to like message us, email us about it, or raise them now. Um, yeah, or you know, give your own update because we love hearing what you guys are up to. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Vicky. Okay. Any, any updates or any other business anyone wants to raise? Um, yeah, could, could I just uh, point out one uh, thing on behalf of the accessibility network? Yeah, of course, go for it. OK, um, so yeah, just just one one quick side note, something that uh, hopefully is going to launch uh, launch soon. So uh, I hope not oversell it um, right now and then have it not be put in place. But um, yeah, as part of the accessibility network, we were also trying to um, push for um, a app to be installed for basically all students on the university um, at you know some locations. And I think I talked about that like last year. So I don't know how many people remember, but um, I don't know if if um, Nelly or Sebastian could put like a link to the Nita box or welcome up into the chat for people to check it out later. And um, we thought um, that would just be a particularly good um, way of just making things more accessible, especially in like uh, building wise, because physical accessibility is always, um, you know, incredibly difficult. Um, to sort of retrofit in. So we thought we sort of can bridge that through the app, um, which effectively just um, works in a way that you could announce yourself, come into that certain building, then someone would get your name, sort of um, your information about your disability and sort of um, some information from local charities around uh, how to approach someone that has that disability and how to help them the best. So it's sort of accessibility announcement plus staff training in, in one application. And I thought that that would be um, really great to have installed on a number of locations on campus. Um, I'm just, you know, thinking about, for example, the library in particular is, I think, the location that the university now agreed to having it installed. And they probably want to install it in September. And if a lot of students are going to use it, they're thinking about installing it in more locations like the Student Support and Wellbeing, um, I don't know, the, the co-op shop or any other sort of um, essential uh, building that is on campus. And I just, um, you know, I don't, I'm not really sure if I'm going to be here next September. So I'm just saying that if anyone is still there, uh, please, and that works, please use that app uh, and promote it so that the university is going to install more apps in that. And if, if, if it actually will be installed, we'll be the first university, I think, in the world who's going to have that app installed. So I think that would be really good. Um, just for disabled students in general, but also for the university, you know, and um, yeah, that's just what I wanted to give everyone an update on. So that seems to be working well after a year of campaigning for it to be installed. Brilliant. Thank you, Paul George. And that sounds really exciting, actually. Um, is there any other follow up comments on um Paul George's update or any other updates at all.
Uh, Sebastian? I just wanted to say that the, um, the LGBT network is um, currently working on uh, how we approach and how we run sort of um, queer holidays. So you might like something like Pride Month, um, Trans Day of Visibility, um, et cetera, et cetera. So if anybody has any thoughts or ideas, um, feel free to approach us. And um, yeah, we're, we're kind of, we're trying to lay a roadmap right now of, <laughs> there's many, many sort of holidays like that. So we're trying to lay a roadmap of um, what do we theme events around? What do we theme network nights around? What maybe is more of like an Instagram post style thing? So if you've got any thoughts on any queer holiday, lesbian day of visibility, non-binary day, uh, throw us a message um, and, and we can chat a bit more about it. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Sebastian. Um, Brilliant. Any um, anyone else? No, I I don't see any other hands. Um, so just quickly, any um final updates from um the officer team? At all, or anything else you want to add from conversations? No. Okay. Um. Fantastic, guys. So, um. Obviously, it has been quite a long evening. So, thank you all so much for your patience and for engaging. Um. And just on a quick note, um, I'd just like to thank the union staff team who's helped put together um the AGM and also the exec meeting tonight as well. Um. Cool. So um, I'll call the meeting to a close there. Have a good evening, everyone.